Hello and welcome back to Aviation Avi. Go where you feel the most alive. Today we'll be talking about ICAO or the International Civil Aviation Organization, how it came into existence and what its significance is. So let's get started. The International Civil Aviation Organization is a UN specialized agency and is a global forum for civil aviation. The ICAO headquarters is in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. The vision of this organization is to achieve safe, secure and sustainable development of civil aviation through cooperation among its member states. We will understand who the member states are and how they become members of this organization shortly. The role of this organization is to formulate standardized principles and techniques for international air navigation, which is to be followed by all of its member states, and to foster planning and growth of international air transport to ensure safe and orderly growth of the industry. Now we'll understand what the foundation of international air transportation is. The international air transportation has certain basic foundations upon which its complex structure rests and operates. The first is the sovereign governments in whose hands ultimate control of international air transport industry of their country lies. Second is intergovernmental bodies like International Civil Aviation Organization itself, the International Telecommunication Union and other organizations like WHO that is the World Health Organization. The third are airline organizations like IATA that is the International Air Transport Association the ATA, that is Air Transport Association of America, the AITAL, that is Association of Latin American Air Transport, and the fourth are airport operator organizations like ACI, that is Airports Council International. These organizations or agencies together help in fostering the safe and orderly development of international civil aviation. In the year 1903, Wright brothers succeeded in their experiments to complete the first ever flight on December 17, 1903 at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Then, in the year 1910, a conference on international air law of 19 European countries was held at Paris. Then, in the year 1919, Paris Peace Convention was held on 13th October, which was attended by 38 states. And this led to the formulation of ICANN, that is International Communication for Aerial Navigation. The outcome of the peace conference was that together all the countries decided to prepare annexes, which are as follows. Annex A, that is marking of aircraft and call signs. To understand what markings on aircraft are, that is the registration mark and the nationality mark, please refer to our video on why VT is written on every aircraft registered in India. This will give you a brief idea of the concept. Annex B, that is certificate of airworthiness. Annex C, logbooks. Annex D, Rules for Lights and Signals of Air Traffic Annex E Qualification for Certificates and Licenses of Pilots and Navigators Annex F Aeronautical Maps and General Marking Annex G Collection and Dissemination of Metrological Information Further, in the year 1927, the first non-stop solo flight across Atlantic from New York to Le Bourget Airport near Paris was conducted in the month of May. Then, in this same year, regular international mail service between USA and Havana, Cuba in October was started by Pan Am. The next year, 
American Convention on Commercial Aviation, also known as the Havana Convention, was signed by USA and 20 other countries. The American Convention for Commercial Aviation was convened for basic principles and rules for the operation of international commercial air services and to prepare a legal instrument tailored to specific needs and philosophies of the countries in the Western Hemisphere. Then came the World War II which led to the birth of the International Civil Aviation Organization. World War II on one hand brought a lot of misery to the world but on the other hand World War II brought remarkable advancement in the field of aviation. The madness to win the war between the alleys and the Axis power, one may call it, unfortunately or fortunately, brought remarkable advancements in the field of aviation. This was the one sector which benefited from the war, which sowed the seed for the creation of International Civil Aviation Organization. At the end of World War II, many governments reached for a possibility of peaceful use of air transport which would require agreement between various nations. The development of aeroplane into a major mode of transport during World War II highlighted to coordinate many issues of international civil aviation which were beyond the reach of individual governments to solve. There were two regional come international regimes, need was felt to have some sort of truly international organization to harmonize global civil aviation development. Then came the Chicago Convention in the year 1944. At the invitation of government of USA, 54 states met in Chicago from 1st of November 1944 to 7th of December 1944 with a view to establish basic legal framework for the operation of international civil air services. Out of 55 states that were invited, 52 states signed the convention. The conference in Chicago agreed on certain principles and agreements in order that international civil aviation may be developed in a safe and orderly manner and that international air transport services may be established on the basis of very importantly equality of opportunity and will be operated soundly and economically that's all for part one of iq how it was formed and what is its significance stay tuned for part two where we will discuss about the chicago convention and access the SARPs and how they are formed. To like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation.